Uh, so like Christina said, I, I recently returned from the Paris Climate Talks. I was there representing the Southern Maine Workers Center with a delegation of frontline community groups called It Takes Roots to Weather the Storm. And uh, this was a really life-changing experience for me to, to be there um, with a delegation of folks who are resisting fracking in their communities, who are resisting waste incineration, who are resisting tar sands extraction, who are resisting oil refineries, who are resisting pipelines, who are resisting the transportation of oil through their communities in a myriad of ways. Um, and it really gave me a new sense of um, sort of the strength of our movement, both on a national and an international scale. Um, and I, I'm excited to get a chance to um, share just a little bit of, of what I experienced there. The demands that our delegation brought to, brought to Paris were these, these were our demands. We wanted to establish mandatory, not voluntary emissions cuts at the source. We wanted to leave fossil fuels in the ground. We demanded uh, a rejection of fracking, nuclear power, and carbon markets, and other da dangerous and false technology solutions. We wanted to strengthen the inclusion of human rights, and particularly the rights of indigenous peoples in the agreement. And we wanted to support community-rooted solutions, including regional and local economic structures that support the production of renewable energy. Um, and I'll talk about this in a second, but pretty much down the line, um, none of those things happened. Uh, quite the opposite in most cases. Um, and this isn't a surprise, uh, but um, it's something like Bill was talking about that sort of speaks to um, the moment that we're in and the magnitude of movement that we need to build um, to, to, to make this vision that we have a reality. Um, so with the few minutes I have tonight, I wanted to say a few things about these demands. I also wanted to say who frontline communities are or what frontline communities are. Talk a little bit about my experience in Paris um, and what this phrase means, it takes roots to weather the storm. Um, so what does it mean to be on the front lines of climate change? In case you haven't heard this term before, frontline communities describe those who are most impacted by climate change and the fossil fuel economy. Um, and this is mostly people of color, indigenous people, and working class communities. Um, these are the communities that are hit first and hardest by climate change, and it's, they're also the communities that uh, hold the true solutions um, that we need if we want to transform society. So I think it's a fair question to ask, aren't we all impacted by climate change? The answer is yes, climate change is definitely impacting everyone on the planet, and the urgency of the crisis can't really be overstated. But what we have to remember is that while these ideas of universality and urgency can be very motivating, they can also be double-edged swords. We have to be wary of rhetoric that tells us that climate change is the worst problem that humanity's ever faced or that it's the most important thing that affects, because it affects all of us. The truth is that climate change is a symptom of violent systems like colonialism, racism, militarism, and capitalism that frontline communities have been resisting for centuries. Uh, so if we're not talking about these interlocking problems, we're not actually talking about climate justice. Um, we already know that the urgency of the problem is going to be used to push through solutions that do more to undermine community rights than, than they do to lift them up. We saw this in Paris. The delegation I was with uh, rejected the Paris Agreement coming out of the experience because uh, it was a corporate crafted document that was more about preserving the right to extract and burn fossil fuels than it was about facilitating the transformation of society. The Paris Agreement puts forth carbon trading schemes which rely on the privatization of forests and the atmosphere. Um, it also allows for false solutions like fracking and nuclear power. Um, basically, it maintains the status quo and it's not an agreement for the people. Yes, it was definitely exciting to see world leaders finally agreeing that climate change is a threat, um, but now it's up to all of us to make sure that the momentum coming out of the agreement gets channeled into solutions that are actually about justice, about reparations, about love and transformation and not about profit and control. So when it comes to addressing climate change, uh, we need to talk about building up the power of working class communities. 
uh, and those communities who are already resisting the harm of the extractive fossil fuel economy. We need to look to movements like Black Lives Matter and the Not One More movement to end all deportations. Um, because addressing state-sanctioned state violence against people of color absolutely has to be central to the climate movement. One of the most impactful experiences I had in Paris was participating in a uh, demonstration outside of a detention center where migrants and refugees were being held before being deported. Um, and that you, sh you should know that there was a surge of uh, house arrests and deportations in Paris uh, in the weeks following the, the terrorist attack in November. The rally outside the detention center was so beautiful. Um, we got to hear from one of the detainees named Amir, uh, who was inside, but who was speaking through an interpreter on a, uh, on a cell, through a cell phone. Um, he was saying, he told us, he was telling the crowd, I'm not a criminal, I've never hurt anyone. I came here to protect myself. Um, so ending violent and repressive border policies has to be central to the climate movement. Uh, and we're not gonna be seeing those kinds of solutions coming through the UN process. So what did we mean by it takes roots to weather the storm? The Workers' Center recently joined an alliance of US-based US frontline communities called the Grassroots Global Justice Alliance, uh, and that's who I traveled to Paris with. We are an alliance of organizations that are rooted in community struggles for justice and self-determination. At the Workers' Center, we're fighting for the human right to health care for all Mainers, and we're also organizing for dignity for low-wage workers. Um, through Grassroots Global Justice, we're uniting our struggles and connecting our local struggle to the international stage, and we're highlighting the national and the international implications of community-rooted solutions to the interlocking crises that we face. Um, we need a new kind of economy, and we need the vision for that economy to come from the ground up and I'd be happy to talk more about that in the Q&A.